The last time I was in New York City was 2012. Yes. It was the year we started this show. I was flown out there for a convention. They put us up in a hotel just off Times Square. One afternoon I had some free time, so I spent some time walking around looking at all the beautiful old off-Broadway theaters. I got to the Barrymore Theater, and I saw that there was a revival of Death of a Salesman. That was directed by that guy right behind you, Mike Nichols. Yeah. And starring Philip Seymour Hoffman. Oh, yeah. Reinterpretation of the role. It's supposed to be really good. And I thought to myself, just go in there. See if you can get a ticket. If you get one, just blow off this convention. Yeah. See some theater in New York. Yeah. Sure, I regret not seeing the play, but I regret not even trying. Yeah. I could have tried. You could have. I, and I could have possibly seen the work of two masters. Mm-hmm. And now they're both dead. Well, luckily you have this album to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> One time I was in New York City, it was my last night there, within blocks from each other. Bob Dylan was playing at Madison Square Garden. Jonathan Richman was playing at Town Hall. Now, these are two of my all-time favorite performers. Ah, I'm so happy I don't have any money. <laughs> I'm out of money. I would be regretting my decision, no matter what. Sometimes the best decision is poverty. I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good, it might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to the basement. Doctors, Craig. They mend broken bones and sometimes they tickle our funny bones. Especially when the doctor in question is Patch Adams. Hmm, this guy. <laughs> Released in 1998, directed by Tom Shadyak, Patch Adams stars the late Robin Williams, the late Philip Seymour Hoffman, and the, as far as I know, still alive Monica Potter. She's still alive, I looked it up. Siskel and Ebert gave the film two thumbs down, calling it overbearing, obnoxious, and sanctimonious. Roger Ebert said of the film, This movie is so shameless. It is not merely a tearjerker. It extracts tears individually by liposuction without <laughs> anesthesia. The real-life Patch Adams, who makes a cameo appearance in this film, refers to it as that loathsome film about me. Mm. He claimed that out of all the aspects of his life and activism, the film merely portrayed him as a funny doctor. How are you feeling right now? Are you feeling sedated? Are you feeling sick? I'm feeling a little bit sick, yes. <laughs> With Sop or My Mom Will Shoot, I found it tolerable because it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. This, I know exactly what it's going to be, and I think I'm going to find it intolerable. You don't have to be a doctor to go into a hospital and entertain some kids, but you do need what's in this box. Oh, a little Patch Adams kit for you. It's a stethoscope and a red foam ball. You know that's a red nose. It's a clown nose. I'm going to out Patch Adams him. <laughs> <laughs> so check yourself into the old leather couch and settle in for some tender loving care as we watch Patch Adams. Oh, God, it's an hour and 56 minutes, Matt. <laughs> we better get watching. I'm going to wear this nose for the entire movie. That's your challenge, man. Or until I get sick of it. Shadyak. You know that every day when Williams got to set, he did like five minutes of materials just on the name Shadyak. <laughs> Mirthful aspiring Dr. Patch Adam starts out the movie suicidal. He's going to an asylum to check himself in because he has suicidal thoughts. There's all kinds of kooks in there. There's this angry old man. How many fingers do you see? Four. Four? Four? Mm, another idiot. Arthur is a genius scientist who checks himself into the sanitarium from time to time to kind of keep his brain in place. Genius syndrome, don't you know? Hey, Rudy! A message to you. Oh and there's Rudy and his squirrel problem. He sees squirrels everywhere. They're gonna get him. The psychiatrists don't seem to be listening. It's official. I'm sick of it. <laughs> it's making my nose sweat. That's why I never went to clown college. Or he didn't get through it, at least. Yeah, it's a complete washout. I'm working on the equation for four. <laughs> Arthur explains the whole four fingers thing. When you look past the fingers and your vision gets all blurry, you see more. So the answer to the riddle is eight fingers. What do you see when you look at me, Arthur? Mork, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know, but it's it's just, that's how I was introduced to you. And Arthur christens him. Patch. Rudy has to go to the bathroom, but he can't because there's a squirrel that's going to get him. <laughs> Terrible improv gun, Robin. Yeah, you should know this. You studied improv. Why don't we kill the squirrels? He and Rudy run around the room. They have a great time. <laughs> what he doesn't know is that Rudy shat himself minutes ago. <laughs> He has an epiphany. Hunter checks himself out of the hospital. He's gonna go to medical school. 
Last night with Rudy, I connected to another human being. I want more of that. I want to desert him now that he has a friend. But the doctor says it's not very wise. I don't give a rat's ass. Or a squirrel's ass, as last night proved. By the way, call me Patch. Two years later at a Virginia medical school, Patch meets his new roommate, Mitch. May I help you? Do you have any issues with squirrels? That's my specialty. <laughs> Mitch is very stuffy. And he doesn't like Patch from the get-go. Dean Walcott gives a lecture to the incoming students. First, do no harm. Second, learn to be a doctor. <laughs> he tells them that they need to become doctors. They can't be emotional. Train the humanity out of you and make you into something better. Dolphins. Pets don't like that. Why does it have to be that way? He keeps asking. There's this real cute girl named Corrine Fisher that Patch has become sweet on. She gives him the brush off. She's there to study, not to date boys. Well, that doesn't stop Patch Adams because we're in a movie. He meets another guy, Truman Schiff. So why do you want to be a doctor? My endgame movie biography. He takes Truman onto the streets to show him his wacky way of looking at life. Yesterday, I made 12 random phone calls. I talked to one man named Dale for three hours. I'm flunking out of school, by the way. <laughs> There's a beef convention in town. Want to come up and hang out? You seem like a nice fella. Sure, can I bring my nerdy friend, too? Sure. They have a wild time there. <laughs> Someday, he will be treating that man's diabetes and hypertension. Probably, like, in three weeks. Pork packers! Rump wrappers! Bull shippers! <laughs> Lend me your steers! They make him an honorary beef doctor by giving him this jacket. Hey, <laughs> check it out. I look just like a doctor now. I'm going to sneak into the hospital and see some patients. Oh, it's the Shawshank Warden. Run! <laughs> he stumbles across the pediatric ward. Hi. Huh? I'm Patch. I'm Vern Troyer. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> He fashions himself a red nose, and then he just goes to town. Makes those kids laugh. Uh, how about a little sugar for the rest of us? What is going on here? <laughs> These children are sick. They can't take all this horsing off. And then like many brilliant people, you don't necessarily think the rules apply to you. I will put you in solitary oh. confinement with Tim Robbins. It won't exactly be solitary, but he'll talk a lot about <laughs> politics. At study group, Patch won't shut up about how they're teaching the school wrong. I think we'd learn more if we were working closely with patients. You know what, Patch? How about we just study? Sorry. Sorry. This has turned into a date, and I refuse. <laughs> One, two, three! <laughs> Patch goes into that hospital on a regular basis, and he does all these crazy antics for all the patients and they all love it. The nurses there, they find him precious and helpful. I cannot stand it in there, Joletti. Is it a squirrel issue? Who's in that room? No, no. Don't even think about it. He'll bite your head off. He's a hydra. <laughs> so be sure you steer clear. Steer. That inspires me. I have a lot of good beef material. Despite all his clowning, turns out he's got some of the best grades in class. He really wants to hang out with Corinne, and he makes her a little red nose. They don't concentrate on the pain. They don't even feel the pain. And then they die because I forgot to give them their medicine. <laughs> and that makes her like him a little. Corinne and Patch and Truman go into this old man's hospital room. Hector Salamanca. Ding, 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 ding. And they've got all kinds of balloons, and he's got a gun, and it's fun. We never see that man again. An old woman tells Patch that all she wants to do in life is to swim around in a big pile of noodles. <laughs> An entire pool full of noodles. That's how I want to die. Make it happen, Patch. <laughs> Kill me with noodles. I have a crush on you. Ha! I know I'm old enough to be a father, but... <laughs> ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Patch goes after his white whale. He's going to go in and see the man in room 305. If he can't be that bad, he is that bad. I don't want your good times, because I'm going through the worst times, jerk hole. The dean of the hospital finds Patch and says, you're not supposed to be here because you're not a third year medical student. And you know what? Your grades seem a little too high. Certain people are accusing you of cheating. Like who? It can only be one person. Old stick in the mud, Mitch. I'm warning you. Stay out of this hospital. It's haunted! <laughs> Patch goes to his room and talks to Mitch. You've been telling the Dean I've been cheating. I don't like you! Why don't you like me? 
because you make my effort a joke. I want to be a doctor. This isn't a game to me. I work really hard, and I'm just as smart as you, and you don't work hard at all. Patch goes back into that mean man's room dressed like this, and he does a kooky thing. We're gonna mock death. Death be not proud. To die. To expire. To pass on. The guy warms up to him. Worm buffet. Kick the bucket. By the farm. Take the cab. Cash in your chips. I hate this scene. Of all the scenes we've seen so far, <laughs> this one is the worst. <laughs> the vitreous body is composed of a transparent jelly. And we must look at it coldly and without emotion. Being that Patch is near the top of his class, Dean Wolcott gives him an assignment. Make preparations and decorations for the gynecology convention. Patch Adams and a bunch of gynecologists, you know something crazy is going to happen. And that is this. A lot of paper mache going on there. He must have stayed up all night. How big is this campus? That word did not get to the dean. <laughs> the dean is shocked, even though surely he expected this to happen. And Patch is expelled. Patch appeals to the president of the college. All right, well, I'll keep you on because your grades are so good. But you need to straighten up and fly right, young man. And you will. Steer clear of Dean Walcott. And whatever you do, don't touch that lamp. <laughs> it's Corinne's birthday. <laughs> and they throw her a surprise party. There's lots of balloons. I'm on acid. And Mitch is in there somewhere, and he's like, Whoa, those balloons, they're meddling with my brain thoughts. She's so touched by this gesture that she gives him a kiss. The man in 305 dies. That is an ugly shirt. And I like ugly shirts. Did you see my boys? I want to show you my boys. <laughs> Zip. <laughs> Look at the boys. <laughs> Do you find this funny? Patch. <laughs> Patch enters his third year at medical school, and now he's allowed to go into the hospital and treat patients. He's at a diner late at night with Taylor. Tyler? Truman. He's at a diner late at night with Truman. He gets a big idea. A free hospital. Perfect. I'm going to do it. Everyone is skeptical. Remember Arthur? Mr. Four? He's got a whole big tract of land, and he gives it to Patch to open the Gesundheit Institute. Because what's funnier than the word Gesundheit? We get a cleaning montage, and a painting montage, and I guess that means it's sterile. And patients are pouring in. A squirrely guy named Larry shows up. He doesn't look right, but Patch doesn't care. Hey, everybody deserves chummy hospital treatment. Come on in, Larry. Corinne and Patch have a heart-to-heart. -heart. What are we? Well, I'm a Julia Roberts knockoff, and <laughs> you're an aging comedian. <laughs> What's the deal? Are we boyfriend and girlfriend or not? I've had some problems with men in the past. It's been hard. But you know what? I like you. Kiss, kiss. And she spends the night with Patch. It's implied... The Institute is running low on medical supplies, so they sneak into the hospital and steal medical supplies. Oh my gosh. Adams! <laughs> <laughs> One night, there's a message on the hospital answering machine. It's Larry. He says, I really need to talk to somebody right now. Corinne, in the dead of night, goes to his house completely alone. Larry's got a real nice house, but something's not right. Corinne Fisher was murdered. <laughs> Corinne dies. She's murdered by Larry. She, he, she, she, with a shotgun. Then well, he turned the gun on himself. You didn't think the movie was going there, did you? Patch has a crisis of conscience. If he had never met Corinne, she would still be alive and well. She knew there was something dangerous about Larry. I didn't see it. There's something about Larry that they don't know. I'm quitting. I can't do this anymore. Mitch, of all people, stops him and says, I'm a better doctor but you're a better person, and you can help this lady who I'm treating, who won't eat. Patch goes up on a cliff and talks to God. You create man. Man suffers enormous amounts of pain. Oh, you're talking to God. It's me, Buddha. I, <laughs> I picked up the call. I, do you have any questions about enlightenment? Just then a butterfly flits by. It's a sign from God that Corinne is okay, and that she wants me to keep practicing. Open to nowhere. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Extracting tears by liposuction. Oh. He goes back to that hospital. You still want help with Mrs. Kennedy? No, she's dead. You <laughs> killed her too. I don't eat because I haven't found any food that I like. I'm like Kafka's The Hunger Artist. <laughs> He's gonna treat that old lady 
with what she's always been asking for. Pool full of spaghetti! Chekhov's noodles have finally been cooked. So another job well done, Patch Adams. Or is it? Wolcott! Patch is expelled again. He steals his records. You can't just go in there and take your own file! Yoink. See you later. Gotta go back to the noodle pot. And he finds notes in his records like excessive happiness. It also says excessive penis, which is totally accurate. He goes before this big board of doctors to plead his case. You treat a disease, you win, you lose. You treat a person, I guarantee you, you win. Retain your heart. Treat patients like they're people. There's a whole troop of young cancer patients who are happy because of Patch's do-goodery. It is the decision of this board that Patch Adams be forced to study engineering. The board rules in favor of Patch, and he's allowed to continue studying medicine. At the graduation, Woolcott actually gives a kind of a wink to Patch, and Patch winks back with his butt. I finally wanted to see his hairy butt. <laughs> he then died of hunger. <laughs> And now you know all about Patch Adams. I'm doing what the old man said. Yeah? I only see five fingers. So you have to move. I have six. The old man's a fool. Not One, so... two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh. When you woke up this morning, did you ever think in your wildest fantasies that you'd be watching Patch Adams? No, I wasn't thinking that, Matt. It met my expectations. I was expecting a movie that was a drama laced with comic bits, though not a funny drama. And that they would just let Robin be Robin. This really is the role Robin Williams was born to play. You give him a bunch of props and just let him go. Yeah, but you could have had Carrot Top in that role, too. With the... Carrot Top doesn't have the heart, though. Patch Adams is kind of a jerk. I think somebody's running away from something. Why can't it just be that I'm running away from you? Good point. I and want he... to study so I can get good grades. We don't have your capacity for absorbing all knowledge off screen. Even Back to School shows Rodney Dangerfield reading. <laughs> The transformation of Corinne was particularly phony. All it takes is a red nose and a mirror to melt that icy heart. What, was he too old? I think he's too old. Because of the age difference, they had to keep their romance somewhat chaste, mm -hmm. or it was going to be kind of gross. It's a delight to finally see Philip Seymour Hoffman on our show. The speech he has in the dorm room, that monologue was floating around the internet right after he died. There was a lot of people posting that on, oh, really? on Facebook. That might have been the seed to watch this movie on our show. His face, that character's entire life is written on his face. Mm -hmm. All of the things he gone through. He was made fun of as a child. He's got a chip on his shoulder. And all of that is there. You know, this is a period piece. But aside from a few cool songs, it really doesn't read as a period piece at all. Some of the shirts. Clothes yeah. and cars, but, but it didn't evoke the era. I'm not sure it had to, but it yeah. didn't. Let's talk about the shotgun murder. <laughs> Truly unexpected plot twist. I was expecting merely a rape at the time. <laughs> What's there to say about it? I Did guess... it happen in real life? That's the important question. Yeah. That shotgun murder suicide better have happened in real life. <laughs> because no movie needs Corinne being shot with a shotgun. I cannot bear a movie that relies on an audience within the movie who's constantly applauding and laughing at someone in the movie. And children are laughing because of you. That's too easy. In real life, the guy in 305 wouldn't be one over. No. Someone wouldn't be. There would be a nurse that would say, oh, this guy again. Yeah, or you're stealing medical supplies. <laughs> yeah. That's really against the law. Person practicing medicine without a license. Mark Shaman lays it on so thick. To make the constant applause and, and laughter sent Patch's way even worse is the fact that Mark Shaman's score is there in the background to say, it's all right if you're not laughing. It's inspiring. It adds to the overall obnoxiousness of the movie. There's someone who plays a bit part of this movie that I actually think would have been better as Patch Adams. Who that? Alan Tudyk. He is one of the crazies in the institution. I know that he would have a Patch Adams in him. And he wouldn't have been a thousand years older than, than Corinne. Patch Adams reboot. Alan Tudyk. But now he's too old. <laughs> 
Oh, darn it. <laughs> One of the things that was working against the movie right out of the gate, it was sold as a comedy. How could it not be? I can't imagine anybody actually laughing no. at any point during the movie, even when he's doing comedy. Yeah, even when he's doing comedy for people who aren't sick, like the Beef Men. Yeah, that was the problem with this period of Robin Williams' career. He's still doing the same thing, but we're not laughing anymore. Mm -hmm. We were laughing in 85. Yeah. Good Will Hunting was good, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was great. And he actually makes you laugh in that movie. It's true. Finally leaving Patch Adams behind. Oh, but he's still out there. Still doing good works. Still helping people. He's more than a movie. We, we assume. I've yes. never met the guy. I've seen pictures. They can do a lot of things with computers these days. <laughs> And now we'd like to perform a little procedure known as Seen It. This is a Seen It theme that I always like. It's a little something called Craig Hasn't Seen It. What? Me? Steve Feistel writes, Trip to Spain was fun. Seen It. Not Seen It. But you've seen the trip. So in a way you have seen the trip to Spain because yes. all of the trip movies are basically the same movie. Car sing-alongs, dueling impressions, meditations on aging and careers. However, there is still an arc to the three films, and that is the relationship between these two guys. In the first movie, they can barely stand each other. By the third movie, Coogan is inviting Rob Brydon to come with him on this trip to Spain. First choice. You get the impression, especially in this one, that of all of the ex-wives and mistresses and kids and everything, the only person who really understands these guys is the other guy. Ah, uh, they found their soulmates. Yeah. The problem with this, like with all of the trip movies, they're all about 15 minutes too long. What else haven't I seen, Matt? Colleen McHugh. I wonder if my two favorite guys on YouTube have seen Koyana Scotsy. Seen it. I know the song. Spoiler alert. I'm just kidding. You can't spoil Koyana Scotsy. <laughs> there's no plot. There's no story. There's no characters. It is just visual. And music by Philip Glass. Mm -hmm. This is experimental filmmaking that really works. I'm not sure what the point of it is, but you come away from it feeling as though you've just experienced something very profound. Let's see what other movies Craig hasn't seen. Well, how about we see what movies you haven't seen, what? Mr. Sloan? Yes. You dare change the theme in the middle of seeing it? Today's theme is Matt Hasn't Seen It. Hand it over, bucko. Deadpan80 writes, Speaking of Errol Flynn, and who isn't, Have you seen My Favorite Year? Does not have Flynn in it, but Peter O'Toole plays a character inspired by him named Alan Swan, a drunkard, has been actor of of swashbucklers that is just so damn charming it's impossible not to love him seen it not seen it i love this movie i know you've spoken of it many times it has that wonderful candy colored quality of 1980s comedies but like the nostalgic comedies it's a movie with mark lynn baker in it i know he stars in it this was one of peter o'toole's three dozen oscar nominations he never won it kind of has that same feeling as arthur extravagant mess of a man yes and the people who have to deal with him nutty nut nuts asks may i suggest you watch a film from finland try leningrad cowboys go america seen it not seen it it is about a rock band from russia they come over to tour the united states it is part of a short-lived mini trend from the early 1990s of people hauling bodies on road trips is it good i don't recall is it funny i do recall it wasn't that funny for me at the age of 18 but still a lot of crazy music in it patch adams opened himself a free hospital you know what else is free our website welcome to the basement show.com you can go there and see all of our episodes and there are paypal donation buttons you can click on to donate to support our show now you might be asking yourself hey why am i donating to support your show what's in it for me well we've created an entire show just for you it's called unboxing and if you donate to the show, you get to hear your name on there. If you send us mail, we open your mail. And there's all kinds of other surprises. Unboxing. It comes out every other Friday. Check it out. It's made just for you. Just you. Sitting there alone. If you're not sitting alone, I'm talking to you, not you. Patch Adams. We have graduated from it, in a way, because we watched it and now it's over and we're getting on with the rest of our lives. We want to thank you for joining us here in the basement. And now, watch this. <coughs> That'd make me feel better. What should happen here is Peter Coyote should actually die in a really funny, goofy way. <laughs> An entire pool full of noodles.